Well, good afternoon. Um, I am so honored to be here today. And if you haven't noticed, I'm not from Canada. I don't have your accent. In fact, I'm from the United States of America, from Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, I hear a whoop. I love that. And so I thought that I would bring the sunshine with me and the warm weather, but they actually checked it at customs. So. <laughs> It's cold. It is so cold. But I am so honored to be here. And if I say y'all, that's just a Southern thing, and it means you all. So just, just, just know that up front. So now that I've uh, gotten all of that out the way, the title of my message is, When You Hit the Glass Ceiling, Open a Window. When you hit the glass ceiling, open a window. And we have many ceilings. There are, are many ceilings that we experience and ceilings represent different things, not just the physical ceiling that you see here, but ceilings are barriers. Any kind of barrier that prevents you from elevating from one level to the next. And those barriers can be voices that tell you, stay in your place. Voices that tell you, be realistic. You can't do that. Voices that tell you, you don't have what it takes. And those voices can be bosses. They can be bad relationships. They can be, um, sometimes they can even be family. Those are just different types of barriers. There's also systems that can be a barrier. Systems like the government. Systems like the corporation or the business that you work for. Sometimes it could even be a misunderstanding of your religious beliefs. And so there are different, different types of barriers. And in my experience, I have found that despite those external ceilings, the biggest ceiling is how you think. It's what you tell yourself. It's self-doubt. That is a ceiling. I tend to find what we call fear is actually self-marginalization. We marginalize ourselves. There's actually a biblical proverb that reads, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And what that tells us is that what you think about yourself matters. You are what you think. And the reverse is also true. You are not what you think you are not. Or you are, excuse me, what you think you are not. So what you tell yourself, you can actually be your own ceiling. Now, I worked in uh, what I call, in the United States, we call it corporate America. What, I, that's the business that we, um, that's what we call when we work for different businesses and, um, or the business culture. And I worked for two organizations, as Charla read to you, and they were both billion dollar organizations. Now, I have had wonderful opportunities. I have grown a lot professionally. I've traveled to over 20 countries. Um, I spent a lot of time with the billionaire CEO and traveled with him um, on occasion. I have had many opportunities to grow as a leader. I also know what it's like to have that kind of quote-unquote success and still know what it feels like to be discounted. I know what it feels like for people to look down on you, whether it's your gender whether it's the color of your skin. I know what that's like. I even know what it's like to feel abandoned and to have experienced cruelty and a spirit of control in the household that I grew up in. I know what that's like. And despite that, there was something inside of me, my own self-belief that said, Juliet, you gotta figure out how to channel a life of pain into a life of promise. And it was a mental exercise that even at the age of 15, 
that I had to adopt for myself. Because I knew that regardless of what the external situation seemed, regardless of the pain or the hurt or um, the emotional abuse even, I knew that my future depended on me. I knew that there was an expiration date to this type of experience. And anything above and beyond that was going to be up to me. And so from that thinking, that's when the world opened up for me. I had to find a window, even in my own experience, and even as a child. Because windows represent the gateway to freedom. It's that land of promise and spaciousness. It's the window that you look out where you see a world of possibilities and a world without limits. And it's a world of freedom as well. And I sought those opportunities um, at 15 years old, despite growing up in, a, in a, an environment that placed a lot of limits on me. And as a result, um, you know, I did well in school. I got scholarships. I went to school. And, uh, and even in the corporate system, I even uh, pursued opportunities that allowed me to grow there. And so I say, say that to set the stage for you because I do believe that when you hit the glass ceiling, whatever that ceiling is for you, there's always hope. There's always a way out. There's always a window that leads you to freedom. Now, I left the corporate system 18 months ago. I left. After 20 years of having so much success as the world says and let me just make let me let me put a disclaimer on success because we tend to think that success is about making lots of money and trust me I made a lot to the point where people thought I was crazy to leave top 1% of income just to give you yeah, so <laughs> my own dad said to me Julie um, <laughs> You sure you want to do this? <laughs> what about those benefits, girl? What about your money? You know, no, he wanted me to be his retirement system, but that's okay, you know. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, I'm going to be okay. I know, because I believe this, and I want to share this with you, is that we were all created. We were all created in God's image and in his likeness. And what that means is that we have the same creative power that's built inside of us. Success is built inside of us. And success is not the title or the money or the accolades that others bestow on you. I want you to think about a new definition of success, and that is knowing your life assignment and following in that path. You know, some of you are in this audience right now sitting on dreams sitting on gifts, sitting on things that were already embedded inside of you, and, and you're not exercising that. And what I tell people is that you have to understand how you were made and that you were designed for success and that you don't have to go looking for purpose because purpose is already inside of you. Your gifts that make you unique, that make you rare, they are already inside of you. And you know that it's true because I want you to think about those dreams that you have, those quiet whispers in your head. You know, when you're alone, where do your thoughts naturally gravitate? Where do they go? What energizes you? You know that you're operating in your gifts because that's where your confidence is. So anybody in this room that struggle with confidence, it's because you're not operating in your gifts. And when you are, this light comes on. It's the gifts that give you your value. It's what makes you rare. It's what makes you unique. And you are called to shine in that uniqueness. You know, God, the, the word, uh, the, and regardless of what your belief system is, um, this applies to whatever you subscribe to. But it's about knowing how you were made, knowing that you have a divine mandate 
to dominate in this world because God gives us dominion, not over people, but over our gifts. And you know that you, we weren't necessarily called to lead over people, and you know this because by show of hands, how many people like to be controlled? <laughs> okay, right. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that feeling because that wasn't how you were created. You weren't created to be controlled. But you were created to dominate, to be fruitful, and to multiply. And that doesn't mean having a bunch of babies. <laughs> It means that taking the gifts that you've been embedded with, that seed, those creative ideas, those natural tendencies and abilities, and being fruitful with them and utilizing them. And I share that, you know, I haven't even gotten to my model. Let me look at this time. Okay, I got nine minutes. Is that, you know, I can talk all day, but I don't have all day, so. <laughs> but this is what I do to help people along their path of self-discovery. And it's, um, it's the model that I've created, Own Your Opportunities, OYO. Can I hear y'all say OYO? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I like that. I just like that. I want that to stick with you. And this is, I want you all to OYO. Oh, I want you all to own your opportunities, own, own what's inside of you. Again, you don't have to go looking for it. It's already there. You are already born with it. So there's three stages of Own Your Opportunities. And the stages are identify your value, invest in your value, and impart your value. And we're going to briefly go through these different stages. We're going to talk about it, and I'll be available to talk further after this session. But the first one is identify. This is where a lot of people struggle because they don't know. They say they don't know what's inside of them. But the truth, you know, think about when you were a kid and the things that you like to do. And I think as children, we had this sense of freedom and boldness that made us alive and it made us say, you know what, when I grow up, I'm gonna be president of the United States or prime minister of Canada. <laughs> but it's that freedom and that boldness that, you know, that made you come alive and that made you, you know, to just tell the world what you were gonna be when you, when you, uh, when you got older, when you grow up. You know, as we get older in life, See, the culture that we live in, it makes us numb to those dreams because the culture tells us, get your education, get a job, get a family, pay your bills, and die. <laughs> That's what culture tells you, but there's a difference between education and revelation. You know, we're taught to go to school and, and, you know, and, and to do well, but we're never really taught or encouraged to become ourselves. We're never taught to understand who we are. We're never taught to self-actualize. Our culture tells us, we will tell you how to think. This is what you do and what you don't do. You know, and, and, we, and we become prey to that system and we remain stuck in that system. And I know because for 20 years I was in my own system. So when I worked in, in business, and, and, and I did grow a lot, and I learned a lot of things, but now I'm, in, I'm, I'm my own person now. And I'm here to encourage you to be your own person too, to be fearless. So identify your value, know your value, know your gifts. Um, I actually go through a self-assessment to help you along that path, and that's available on my website, um, juliethall.com. And so, the, but it's, it's really questions that you ask yourself. Like, where, what energizes you? What makes you feel strong? People want to be in a place in their jobs and in their environments where they feel strong. That's the first step. And the second step is invest in your value. And invest means, you know, develop, develop and refine your gifts. If you do work for other people, that is an opportunity to invest in your own gifts, to submit under an, an authority where you can be covered, where you can learn um, from different leaders, um, where you can try new things. I mean, look at working for other people as an opportunity where they're paying you to develop yourself. Change your thinking about that, but realize 
or my encouragement to you is don't look at your company as your permanent address. Don't do it. So many people find their value in the company that they work for. I know I did for a while, a long time. It was Juliet Hall, comma, in the title and the name of the company. But see, the value isn't in the title or in the name of the company. The value is what's before that comma, which is your name. Who is Sally? Who is Morgan? The value is in you. The gifts that you have inside of you, no organization gave it to you. You went to that organization and you brought those gifts there. So if you operate in your giftedness, then no organization can really ever fire you. You will always have employment. You will always attract opportunities because you're leveraging what you've been designed to do, what you've been put on this earth to do. And you will attract opportunity. So invest in your value. You will only grow in the right environment. All right, and the third um, stage of own your opportunities is in part your value. Share your value with the world. Don't just keep it to yourself. Again, you haven't, you weren't put on this earth to just to not grow. You were called to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish the earth, and to subdue it. And that's how you dominate, and, you know, and that's a lot of spiritual talk there. But essentially what that means is if you've been called to, and I met someone who said, you know, what I really want to do is I want to save dogs because that's where her heart is. And no matter how others may find that strange or odd, that's what makes her unique. And I guarantee you the strangest things even if it doesn't fit within culture or it doesn't fit within mainstream uh, corporations. I mean, it, it's okay. It's what makes you unique, and that's what you've been called to do. And because it's so unique, you're going to attract people because you will have your own niche. You will stand out. I've been called to be an inspirational speaker and storyteller, which is what I love to do. I love opportunities like this to encourage people along their paths towards self-discovery. And the questions I get, well, how do you monetize that? You know, how do you make money from that? Well, I've been doing it now for 18 months and I'm doing just fine. <laughs> I still have a roof over my head. I don't want for anything except for more opportunities. So Charlotte, you know, put me on the list for the other cities. But, um, but that's own your opportunities. This is how you owe yo. This is how I owe yo. Be true to yourself. Redefine what success is to you, what it means to you. It's not about what other people say. It's about you knowing your life assignment and following in that path. And at this time, I think, oh, I do have three minutes. Okay, so let me, I'm going to talk some more. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> So, um, but that's what I want to share with each of you, and I um, really am passionate about seeing people be who they are. Apple trees don't make bananas, right? Okay? So the gifts that are, in, so the point is, don't give up who you are, don't give up your identi identity, don't conform. I don't know about you, but I know that when I was early on in my corporate career and I would look at certain people and how they got ahead, I'm like, oh, if I could just do it like them, then those same opportunities would come to me. That's not true. You have to be willing to fail at fitting in. You have to own who you are and don't let other people think for you. And don't think by giving up your identity to take on somebody else's is going to give is going to uh, make you successful. In fact, that's a recipe for disaster. And you will look awkward. You will feel awkward, um, and it will be extremely uh, disastrous for you. Uh, so that's really what I want to say. Own your opportunities. Know your value. Your gifts are what make you valuable your gifts, not somebody else's. Invest in them and then share them with the world. 
And that's what I will uh, end with today. So thank you so much. Juliet Hall.